So it's about time I revisited this thing. I never actually finished it. I did, I did like part one video. This would be part two. Part one was be basically doing some repairs to this thing, getting it up and going. But I never actually quite finished it. There's still a couple of little bits to do on it. I thought it's about time I come back to this. It's been several months. We'll finish off the bits which needed doing. Now one thing you can see, it's got a bit of a wobble. We're going to have to fix that for a start. This thing offers battery operation. And battery operation is currently non-functional. There's no battery pack in it. Now one risk with these things is the power supply circuitry in these is very, very basic. And actually relies on the battery being in there to help reduce the voltage of the supply. So the, obviously the battery is going to be kind of clamping across the supply rails a little bit. And absorbing power. And what that will then do is cause the voltage to be sitting a bit lower. Now, when you don't have the battery pack in here, there's actually a risk that you can damage the unit by having too high a voltage on the supply rail. The units of these, just the, the plain A version, because it's the AB, B means battery, I think. The plain A version doesn't have a battery pack in it, and they actually have a zener diode across the supply rail to clamp the voltage, so it can't go above a certain voltage, which is... Uh, to 10 volts in it, which is in there. So I obviously need to do the battery pack thing. I do want to make this thing able to operate off a battery. If you want to do really low noise measurements, you have to run off battery really. You can't use AC power coming to it because it's just too noisy. So that's one of the things I need to sort out. Is I want to put a battery pack in it and get that working. Let's see what voltage we get in there without the battery pack and on the line operate and the battery charge options. So line operate runs through a 150 ohm resistor. On the battery charge position, it goes through a 39 ohm resistor, so obviously provides a higher voltage. So I want to see what voltages we're getting on both those positions. I think, if I remember rightly, there's also an issue with the ranging. I think there was a problem with the range switch here, if I remember rightly. I'm going to retest that. I think a couple of those were reading a bit off from memory. I don't remember too well. So this is months ago and I worked on this thing before. So I'm going to recheck that as well. So another thing about this unit is we never actually took off this internal shield. This is where the amplifier section is inside it. It's very sensitive stuff in there, but it's loads of capacitors. I think there's like 10 capacitors on there, and I haven't even looked at them. I haven't had this cover off. I think I'll take these side covers off, maybe, so I'll get to these screws at the back, because you've got these two screws at the back here. Got to get off, and the two at the top. Then you can lift this cover off. It's a shame it doesn't look like screw holes straight through here, which would have been handy. Could have designed it that way, but I didn't. Before I worry about this part, is I'm going to do the battery thing and just get that bit sorted out. So I'm going to plug in power. Now, in the previous video, I converted this and made it an ISC connector. So that's obviously present already because we did that conversion. So I'm going to hook up the power. We're going to measure on this capacitor here, C201. And we'll see what voltage we're getting in both positions of that switch. And that will tell us what voltages we're dealing with. We've got a nickel metal hydride 9.6 volt battery pack. Right, so this is 8 cells in here, which is an equivalent of what was originally here. Obviously this is NICAD originally. I could put NICAD in, but I've got nickel metal hydride sitting right here. Voltage wise it's the same. And this is what I'll fit as I put this in instead. Right, so I've hooked onto the capacitor here. I'm going to use my Fluke 175 for this. Turn the power on. Should see nothing yet because the power switch is currently off. Okay, line operate mode. Here we go. So we're getting 12 volts there. This is going to bump around a bit and stuff once it settles down. So we're getting about 12 and a half volts in line operate mode. Okay, so we don't want to go above that. Now obviously this is without the battery. In battery mode, look at that, we're getting like 17 volts. Yeah, okay, that's a bit of a difference there, isn't there? Line operate mode, 12.6. Let's get this battery installed in here and we'll see what voltages we're getting then. And obviously the capacitors are storing a bit of power here. 10.7 volts sitting on the capacitor. Because these wires on this battery are a little bit short, we're going to have to extend them. I don't have a suitable connector for this, so I'm going to have to cut these wires off and just put some extensions on. Just to bring it up, because the battery points are on a circuit board right here. Puzzle miles right there, so I need to bring them to those connections. So I pre-cut some wires to put on them, I'm just going to cut those off, extend them a little bit. Then we can wire straight to the circuit board, and um, then we can recheck those voltages with this battery pack connected. Battery is now wired in, haven't tested it yet. we still got voltage on that capacitor, it's interesting. It's been like five minutes. Anyway, battery is wired in, it's not mounted. So the first thing we do is check voltages again in these modes with that battery connected. Battery check is working. So we'll turn the power on. Let's see what we're getting. Line operate mode. There we go, we're getting 10 volts now. Exactly 10 volts, that's interesting. Okay, and battery mode, 10.2. So yeah, that's why you use a 10 volt zener, because obviously that 10 volt is a nice capping level for that particular voltage so that's fine okay 
I don't know if more the friction or less the friction is less. I don't, I don't actually know what voltage this battery is running at right now. And battery operate mode, 7.3 volts, that's what it says right now. So it's probably what the voltage is generating, 7.3 volts. Well that would be about there, so maybe more defection is better. Okay, let's put it on charge. Battery charge and line operate mode, leave it on that for a while. And we'll see if the battery voltage increases. So what did I say it was? 7.3 wasn't it? No, it's saying 9.5. <laughs> I'll leave it on there for a while and then I'll come back. I might have to manually measure these battery voltages. And we'll measure these battery connections and see what we're getting. One connection goes straight to the negative of this capacitor, so that's correct. And the other one goes to this diode. So that is indeed the battery voltage, or 10.29 when it's charging. Let's bring it around to battery operate mode. So see 9.2 there. It'd be nice to know if it's actually representative of what it's actually doing. And this one here again, that's sitting at 10 volts. So what I'm actually thinking is that really what they should have done from factory on these flukes is to have a 11 volt zener across that C201 to clamp that level there. So if you do have a battery pack issue and it open, goes open circuit, you don't accidentally shove 17 volts into your circuitry, which apparently is known to damage it. 17 volts is a bit higher than 10, almost double, almost 30% more. So <laughs> anyway, I'm going to leave it sitting for a while, let it charge up and we'll do some testing on it and see what's going on with these ranges. We'll inject some voltages. All right, so I've got the PDVST Mini here from Ian Johnston. Now obviously it's not warmed up, so I've got a set of 10 volts. It's in line operate mode, battery charge mode. This voltage is gradually increasing. I've now secured the battery in the casing, it's now attached. So let's do one volt, that's showing up. Okay, so I've got the 10 volts. This is the range I'm mean, currently in. So 10 volts, and there we go, we're getting 10 volts. That's working fine, okay? So three volts there, should be full scale. It is. Do one volt. See, it's sitting slightly low. This really needs to be angled very slightly for you, so you can see it a bit better. But anyway, I've got to adjust the camera slightly. So let's do one volt scale. We'll run, run volt range. Should be full scale. It is. Let's do 300. It's looking pretty good. 300 range. That's good. I remember there being some kind of issue with it. I don't remember exactly what it was. It's 100 millivolts. That's fine, 100 near, it's fine, obviously not doing any zeroing yet, I'm going to get close to the point where I need to do zeroing soon. 30, it's looking fine, that looks fine, nothing standing out so far as being a problem. Maybe I was remembering this wrong, I don't know, 10, should be full scale, yep, basically is, 3 millivolts, yep, be full scale there, I don't know, maybe I was remembering this wrong, maybe because of the voltages coming in maybe it's causing it to be upset because the voltage is coming in is too high because don't forget even without the battery in nine operate mode we were still getting 12 volts so maybe that was upsetting it right now it's actually looking pretty good so let's do zero we'll do the zeroing on this thing to check it out so we're sitting very slightly to the left so you can see zero here is that's off on the scale here remember in the previous video i showed that the um, needle appeared to be slightly bent and the shadow is also making this a bit harder. <laughs> Got shadows on it. Anyway, so it's the so it's three millivolts. So we're back to three millivolts again. Look at that. Perfect. One millivolt. Perfect. One millivolt scale. Yep, even without changing the zero ring. Three hundred microvolts. Yep. Hit a microvolt scale. Perfect. Yeah. 100 microvolts. Okay, we've got a bit of an offset there. Let's check the zeroing. Yeah. Sitting very slightly high. Shadow's making this hard to get right. There you go. Let's do it again. Yeah, it's basically bang on now. It's good. On there, it's basically bang on. 30 microvolts, and it's sitting just above there. Let's just do zero and again. You can see I'm swinging this quite a bit. There you go, it's about there. 30. Yeah, it's basically there. Camera's sitting slightly high, don't forget. Okay, so let's go to the 30 microvolt range. So we're just off the top of scale. Let's zero again. Now, see this one here, there we go. 
it's starting to get a bit of noise as well. Maybe I should put the top casing back on. And don't forget we are currently running off mains. Alright, so it's zeroed there and there's 30 there, sitting slightly high. Now, this isn't perfect for these really small numbers. There is a offset there, you know, because it's obviously a digital conversion. It's a 12-bit DAC or 16-bit DAC, I can't remember now. So when you're getting down to these low levels, there is some rounding going on here as far as this accuracy. So we're talking about, yeah, probably maybe 5 microvolts or something difference here. Not much. Okay, so let's go down to 1. That's looking pretty good. Tends to sitting slightly high. Got a zero again, this whole rounding thing and the DAC accuracy comes into play here. Alright, so zero that again as much as I can. It is bouncing around very slightly. It's probably why I want to get it off mains power, so it's drifting a little bit. That's pretty close. Do 10 and uh, over very slightly there. But the initial thing I remember seeing was one of the ranges was really out of whack and um, I'm not seeing that now so I think it may have just been purely because it's running on mains power with too high voltage coming in so if I come over here so battery check mode is now so it's just over 8 volts just under 8 volts it actually says anyway battery operate mode it's working on that so let's do zero again see if I can zero this we'll turn the mains AC off and we're even going to unplug it now there is still a lot of ambient noise around me, like transmitted noise, RAF, that kind of stuff. There is still some noise going on, so it's still going to get bouncing, but not too bad. So let's do 10 on there again, and we are overshooting very slightly. So it's probably to do with the DAC in this. Maybe Ian can chime in, I know he watches my videos, so maybe Ian can put a comment down below about what he expects that error to be on that. I'm sure I could sit down and work it out myself, but I'm a lazy bastard. But is Ian will noticing inside out. <laughs> You can tell us all about 10 with full scale, so we're probably half a microvolt. So it's going to be half a microvolt error. Maybe one microvolt. Not much in it. So it's probably going to be less than one microvolt error there. So that's alright. But obviously the battery thing's working. That's good. We're seeing 8.66 volts on that capacitor. So obviously this battery still needs to charge up some more yet. But I think we're pretty good there actually. I'm pretty happy with that. It's working. It seems to be fine now. I still have a look inside this cover here and shut those capacitors out just to make sure there's nothing horrendous going on there. The other ones on the back were fine when I checked those, so these are probably still fine as well. But I'd, I'd like to check to make sure. So I removed the top screws, and like I said, there's two screws on the back here. Now I've got this little right angle ratchet thing here, which has got a bit in it, so you can actually get into tight spaces with this. So let's see what I'm getting here with this. I think getting it out is going to be easy, getting it back again is going to be hard, but unfortunately they're not slotted holes, they actually are holes, a bit tricky to get into. That is turning as well. Let's see if I can get here with these tweezers and undo it with this. Fortunately they not slotted. <laughs> if it was slotted it'd be a lot easier. Yeah, so I think that's what I say, take the side panels off so you can get them a lot easier. But these are your calibration cells on them, I don't know disturb those. It's quite nice if these are left intact. So I'll come back once I've got this cover off. Never stick your fingers in here. This is precision. Any oils off your skin, that sort of stuff, they could affect the accuracy of anything that's inside here. Okay, so don't touch anything behind this panel. If you have to do any kind of changes in there, put gloves on. I've got some black gloves over here, which I can use to keep my oily fingers off everything. Okay, but for now, I just need to get the cover off to have a look. Got the screws out, let's lift the cover off. And what we greeted within here. So like I said, there's a few capacitors in there, which I want to check. A few electrolytics. I just want to test them and see if they seem okay. And if they are, then that's all I'll be doing. You can see some, is that a burnt resistor? No, no, it's just the shadow, it's fine. So yeah, don't touch anything in there. Unless you absolutely have to. There's some tantalums in there as well, which is fine. Wet tantalum should be fine. But see the electrolytics I'm worried about. So I'm going to try and probe in there and check those out and make sure they're okay. Actually, just noticed something. I'm looking at this needle here. I'm suspecting this needle is bent. So you can kind of see straight down the top of the meter now. So you can see straight down the meter now. And then you can actually look straight down the needle. That needle is not bent. But it is sitting slightly offset from the actual meter movement. So you can see the meter movement is very slightly off to one side compared to the scale. Scale is slightly to the right. 
and that can explain why it's a bit weird. Well, it's measures and caps. Got the ESR 70 there. Like I said, I'm not sticking my fingers inside it, I'm just going to stick the probes in. That says in circuit and leaky 1.15 ohms. Can't measure the capacitance, but it says 1.27 ohms at that time. It's not a great start. Let's try this one. 30 microfarad 4.2 ohms. Next one. Uh, 391, 1 ohm. And probably measure from, from the back instead. So again, don't touch anything. There. 13.3, 1.65. And the last one, I think. 1500.44. So the nothing horrendous there. I mean, 1 ohm or so, it's not that bad. I think there's some more than the bottom there. There are, which I can't reach from here. So the ones I've checked look basically fine, so I might just leave it as is. Just assume that the rest are going to be okay, because I haven't found a single bad cap in this thing yet. So when I was looking inside there, I did notice a sticker floating around in there. It's obviously come off or something. But its description is shielded meter, so I'm guessing this is actually stuck to the back of the meter originally, and it's made its way inside it. 54-4762-0100. I might just shove it back in and just... Leave it alone. It looks like it's curved, so it's probably around the outside of the meter originally. That's my guess. So I think I'm happy with this now. I don't think I need to do anything else. I'm just going to charge the battery up. Let's do that. Let's give it some charge. Yeah, I think I actually may have made some incorrect comments previously about this thing, because I was working on a couple of things at the same time. Both required battery back systems. I think I made comments mistakenly about this unit in regards to using a charging circuitry and some other modifications I was going to do to charge the batteries up. And I think I was getting confused between this and the other unit I was working on which I can't remember what that was now either. But I did some modifications to that one which is probably what I was thinking of at the time when I discussed this unit. So obviously this is just putting a battery back in and that's it basically. Yeah so if you saw my comments previously somewhere, I think it's on the EV blog forum I may have mentioned it. Could be in the comments in the previous video, I don't remember. I think I may have got mixed up between what I was going to do with this and what I was going to do with something else. If you're wondering why I didn't do what you're expecting, maybe that's why. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> It's working, I'm happy with that. Accuracy seems good enough. I probably do need to do some more testing at those lower levels here. I do have some dividers, I could actually put this thing through a divider and actually scale the voltage down, so I can use a higher voltage which is more precise, scale it down and then check these lower levels on this thing. I can probably do that later on. From what I can see, it's working fine. I don't have a problem with it, it's um, looking pretty good. So I mean, if I shove in 30 volt range, I've still got to do the wobbling feet. So let's do 10 volts on there, that's fine. So now at least from the 10 microvolt through to the 30 volt range is basically working. We know that much at least. Do 100 volts, so it should be on the one there, it is. Bang on. So that's fine. It works, I'm happy with that. I'm going to charge the battery up, I'm going to put it away in storage. That's the benefit of using nickel metal hydride. Those batteries are brilliant for long term use. They're like my favourites. I need to get some more, I always need to buy more batteries for some reason. And it's getting harder and harder to buy decent bits of test gear these days. You know, broken stuff. It's just the prices are ridiculous. I used to buy a lot more broken test gear than I do now because I could buy things at reasonable prices and I could fix them up. It makes it worthwhile. But if I have to spend one or two thousand dollars on a broken piece of test gear, it's pretty hard to justify that. That money comes out of my pocket because YouTube does not pay that well. <laughs> Far from it. So the Patreon supporters and YouTube members also they help a lot to allow me to buy things to do videos about because that all helps. All the money I make from YouTube goes back into the channel. I don't actually profit from it. In fact, my own income, my day job, subsidizes this channel by quite a considerable amount. So if you like the video, check out a lot of stuff down below. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. Patreon support link over there if you want to help me to buy more bits of test gear to do videos about whilst I fix them. Bye. Catch you later.